Thank you very much, Jenny. Okay, I think we're going to get started, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nick McCarter. I'm the Head of Student Services here at Cordy College. I just wanted to thank you all for joining our event um, today. I'm going to talk to you um, um, this afternoon about the outstanding uh, support and opportunities we have available to students here at Cordy College. And, this, and how this outstanding support is offered by a number of key teams and who um, students will be working with throughout their journey while they're here at college. So very quickly, I'm just gonna go through how it's gonna to work today. Um, and um, it'll be a presentation where we'll talk through a number of key points, but also um, what um, all the participants are able to do is you can use the Q&A box at any time for questions for our panelists and we will answer your questions um, as, as we go along throughout this presentation. You can use the chat function if any of you are experiencing any problems and my colleagues will try and help you. And just as a point, the webinar is being recorded and you can access the recording at our, our crawling.ac.uk slash open. So you may already know, um, but in uh, March this year, we were visited by Ofsted and uh, we had a very um, thorough inspection for a whole week. We received an overall judgment of outstanding, which we are very proud to achieve. This outstanding result means that whatever course you decide to do, whether it's a full-time course or an apprenticeship or a part-time adult course, you will re receive outstanding support uh, to teaching and learning and have outstanding support and with hard work, you will have the best opportunity to achieve the qualifications that will help you achieve your dreams. I'm going to talk you through some of those support services that are going to help you do that while you're here at college. So the first team I'm going to talk to you about is Progression Plus. So Progression Plus is a group-wide brand which is based on each of our college campuses. The team includes experts who will support you in making choices that will suit your interests and abilities and equip you with the personal and employability development that you need to make the most of your future opportunities. We know you're an individual and that's why we'll give you impartial advice and guidance on courses, employment, work experience, apprenticeships and higher uh, opportunities. We'll help you make the right choice for you. From the moment that you start at college, we start preparing you for your next steps. It's your future. We want to ensure you have the best opportunity to make the most of it, starting with a career that matches your ambitions. We provide access to careers and higher education fairs, as well as arranging talks, visits and guest speakers, all demonstrating the choices available to you, as well as delivering workshops that help you to achieve and develop the life skills which will prepare you for future work for study. So we offer a wide range of resources to support students, including one-to-one -one interviews with qualified careers advisors and access to a whole host of online resources. The resources are accessible through our CCG online and through our Moodle pages, which means that as students, you can have a look at, at those resources at a time that's convenient for you and at your own pace. The resources are there to support you with employability skills, including CV writing and mock interviews. The apprenticeship team have events throughout the year where students can discuss how to gain an apprenticeship and job vacancies that are available throughout your time here at college. The future is in your hands, but we can help you get started. Student tutors offer a unique supportive and motivational pastoral support service to full-time students aged 16 to 18. CCG consider pastoral support as a key priority to ensuring learners achieve their potential and have the best experience while studying here at college. When you start at college, you'll be allocated a student tutor in your first week who will help you settle into college and be available to resolve any concerns that you may have. Throughout your time with us, they'll monitor your attendance, your progress and your personal development. Your student tutor will work in partnership with you, your teaching team, your parents, carers and any appropriate support agencies to make sure your individual needs are met. You can contact your student tutor at any time throughout the college hours. You can visit them in the student services. We have an open door policy 
And at any time or any time you want to speak to somebody, you can come in and you can visit them. If they're not available, someone else will always be on hand to help you. We always have a number of contact methods to ensure communication and support is readily available to you while you're here. Your student tutor will be the first point of contact for you and you will work closely with them throughout your time here at college. They work very closely with the course teams and your lecturers. So we'll see your student tutor quite a lot across college as well as seeing you regularly through one-to-one -one meetings and in your weekly ACES sessions. These meetings are an opportunity for you to meet with your student tutor on a one-to-one -one basis and you'll have a minimum of four planned meetings throughout the year. During these meetings you'll be able to discuss your progress on your course as well as your personal aspirations and what you need to do to achieve them. Each one-to-one -one is a slightly different focus and they're all designed to keep you moving through your course, help keep you on track with your studies and focusing on your next steps. One-to-ones also give you the opportunity to seek advice and guidance on real life problems you may be experiencing and your student tutors will be able to help you get back on track if things don't quite go to plan. Your student tutor will also discuss course team feedback, grades and your attendance with you. They will encourage your achievements and they will definitely celebrate your successes with you. So this is our tutorial program that we have here at college. Our ACES mission is to prepare and inspire a generation to be global citizens who are curious about their world. ACES stands for Attitude, Choices, Employability and Skills. These weekly timetable interactive workshops are led by your student tutors and allow you the opportunity to broaden your knowledge and understanding of a wide range of everyday topics. We look at themes such as environment, social media, personal well-being, healthy relationships, youth culture, money matters, and much, much more. In group work and discussions, you'll be encouraged to work together, offer input on different topics, and bring your own ideas and examples to share with your peers. Through activities and debates, you'll be able to identify the skills you're building for, for either moving on, whether it's for employment, apprenticeship, university, or further study. Feedback is really important to us at college, and we very much listen to our student voice. It helps us to provide students with the best experience in college and to ensure we continue to provide an outstanding service. Here are some of the things students have said about the OASIS program. I like how we tackle hard hitting subjects in a sensitive way. I was able to use the session to talk about my mental health. It helped me a lot. Every session we ended up talking about it afterwards. We really look forward to them. Your achievement and personal well-being are key to your success at CCG. Your student tutor will support you throughout your journey with us. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, I'm now going to talk to you about how Crawley College Student Union works and what they do to support student voice uh, across the college and how students can get involved. <laughs> Too much talking. The Student Union is here to ensure that all our students have the best possible time while at college. We provide students with some incredible opportunities and experiences throughout their time. We are recognised as one of the strongest further education student unions in the country and we support your college life in a big way. Student voice is at the centre of everything we do here at Crawley College. The Student Union play a massive role in ensuring that all students are given the opportunity to feedback on their experiences and see services improve as a result. Student voice runs throughout the whole college, from students to staff to senior managers. The way that it works at college is, every class in college has one or two student reps who are the voice of their class. They communicate their views and opinions of their class to student union and to senior managers. The college also has a strong student leadership team known as the student executive who have a larger responsibility to listen to student voice. They help run the union and are involved in supporting the college make decisions that impact on students. The student union and the student executive is led or led by the student union officers, the president and the vice presidents who are elected in by the student body. As you can see, 
Student reps will attend a number of student conferences throughout the year where they get the opportunity to develop their skills, feedback to senior managers, and represent the view of their classes. One example of student feedback and actions taken as a result of this was in the development and creation of our student spaces here at Cordy College, specifically the student union rooms, where students get to relax on a couch, play pool, play foosball, play stations, and use the computers in a space that is accessible to them. You can even drop by and just have a bite to eat. It's a space that's made by students and designed by students. As you can see, our student executive take part in a number of fun activities that include student executive training days, student committee meetings, and fundraising events throughout the academic year. It's really important that we develop student skills and our student executive really enjoy the great opportunities such as training to observe lessons, regular meetings with senior managers, and managing things like budgets and interviewing for key college staff. I'm now going to talk to you a bit more about the Crawley College Extra and the amazing opportunities we offer students to get involved in. So Crawley College Extra provides you with a number of opportunities outside your course, including events, clubs, volunteering and trips to ensure that you have the best possible experience while you study here at college. We run lots of events throughout the year with plenty for you to get involved with and also run weekly clubs and sports teams that are open to all students, including football, therapy dog, cricket, and that's just to name a few. Every year, we also run UK trips to places like Thorpe Park and Harry Potter Studios. And our trips abroad have included places like Disneyland Paris, Iceland, and Costa Rica, where students have had some amazing experiences all over the world. One of our most popular trips is our volunteering trip to Kenya to support underprivileged kids. Uh, children. This year we're planning trips to Wales, Greece, Disneyland Paris and Kenya. Make sure you follow us on social media to keep up to date with college life. There is loads to get involved with and lots of opportunities and experiences to be had with the Crawley College Student Union and Crawley College Extra. We look forward to welcoming you in September. We're now going to show you a video that was put together by our student executives, which is a high, their highlight package of the year. I hope you enjoy it. Outstanding. So making sure they be the best person, as you said, be outstanding in who they can be, you know, make sure they have the best experience at their college. Come on, yes, I'm a student exec. I'm approachable, so come be sociable. Your opinions matter, so come for a chat off. Bring your diversity and attack all adversity, or even help you if you want to go to university. We are kind, so speak your mind. <laughs> we cater to everyone, great and small, so come to our open day and come say hey. We are CCG, we are student exec. If you need help with anything, we'll get you set. We are CCG! <laughs>
Ofsted result. And it's thanks to you, the students. We wouldn't be outstanding without you. Cruelly. What a journey we've been on. Over the last two years, Cruelly SU have worked so hard with students, reps, exec and staff to project student voice across the college. And this result just shows how amazing it really is to be at Cruelly. It really is outstanding. So well done for outstanding. This means we can continue to push student voice further and harder than it's ever been before. This is only our first step. I'm proud. Outstanding. I hope you enjoyed that video and that you found the information that we've shared with you today useful. Uh, thank you again for attending our open event and we hope this gives you a clear insight into what supporting opportunities are available to you when you start a college and how you can make the most of your experience while you were with us. Uh, we, we, we want you to love your time with us here and really get involved in our outstanding college community. Uh, we will now welcome any questions you have and um, myself and along with some of our panellists will do our best to answer them. Thank you. Hi Nick, so we've had quite a few questions through. Um, the team Brilliant. have been amazing and it seems like they've actually answered majority of them. Okay. Um, but if you're able to just expand a little bit more. Um, so starting off we've got some questions regarding student union. So again I know you touched on it in the PowerPoint but if students want to become part of the SU, how do they do this? And when is the time that they normally start putting themselves up for the vote? Okay, that's a really good question. Thank you. So what happens is at the beginning of the academic year, so you guys will start in September and then you'll have your induction. And then in week three, so you get to know your other students on your course and there's a time for you to kind of get to know each other. And then you sort of start to settle down after about week two. And then in week three, what we do is we have our, we have our um, student rep elections. So um, you will do this in your ACES um, tutorial with your student tutor. And um, there'll be a session on what, it's, what, what being a rep is all about. Um, there'll be some information about how to become a student rep. And then at the end of that session, your class will then elect um, a student rep um, for that particular class. So that will be the opportunity then for you to get involved straight away. And then after that, um, you will get, um, as your student rep, you'll then get invited to our first student conference. So you'll have a student conference where all the other reps all get together from all the other classes. And you are, um, you're able to then meet with managers and talk about feedback and what's going well in your course what things that um, could be better, and uh, managers are, are there to help answer any questions that any of your groups have. So that's how it gets started, right at the beginning of the year, week three. Perfect. And for students who want to become part of the SU and become a rep, is this going to look good on their CV or UCAS application? Yeah, absolutely. So part of that, um, part of your, um, uh, the benefits of being involved is that you can, um, you can get a personal reference um, from the student union um, based on your, um, you know, your, how you've got involved and what you've done and your contribution in terms of um, the positive impact that you've had um, through the union at college. So yes, it will benefit you absolutely. Great. Um, can you just name a few of the trips, charity and fundraising events that we've done in the past, just to give them a few ideas of what they could possibly do when they come to Crawley College? Yeah, so we've done a number of different activities. Um, we do um, fundraising um, events, you know, for children in need, sport relief, comic relief. Um, and um, then we do other ones. Uh, we work closely with Crawley Open House. Um, so we, um, our student um, executive actually run that, do the collections and then go over and make the donations themselves themselves which is an, an amazing experience and and it's really nice to have those links with our local community here in Cawley too. In terms of the trips um, we uh, we did Disneyland Paris um, last year where students from Cawley went um, for the first time. We also went um, to the US when we were able to um, as well there was a trip to New York which students from Cawley went to. 
We um, have taken uh, students from Cordy over to Kenya um, for the last couple of years, which has been an unbelievable experience. So um, the opportunities that are available um, across the group um, within CCG are open to all Cordy students as well, which is great. So that means that we can run the trips much more cost effectively and give more students much more opportunities. Perfect. So with regards to these trips, um, are they fully funded by the college? Do students have to contribute? And again, the same with clubs and sports teams. Are they free? Are they funded? So the clubs and the sports teams, um, those are free. Um, so you don't have to pay for those. We work very hard with other local partners within Crawley um, to run um, lots of different clubs for students. A lot of the actual clubs within the college are run by students themselves which is really important because it's not for us to say what clubs should run actually these, this is part of student voice this is these are clubs that are run by students for students because that's what you want to do so that's really important for us here that we listen to what students have to say um, in terms of um, the trips themselves and other external activities that students take place in um, there is a cost involved with that, but we do work really hard to keep the cost down as much as possible. Um, one thing to add to that is that any students who um, are receive, in receipt of bursary can get up to a 25% contribution from, their, um, from the bursary. So if you do qualify for the support grant um, and um, you are in receipt of support through the bursary, you can actually get um, up to 25% funding um, through your bursary for a trip. So we try and make them as accessible as possible for everyone. Perfect, thank you so much, Nick. No problem. So we've got some questions surrounding um, student tutors and ACEs and general support now. Yeah. Um, so one of the questions is, who would they contact if they didn't feel well, maybe they couldn't attend a lesson? They would contact the student tutor and there's a number of ways that students can do that. Um, so we try and make it as accessible as possible again. So generally speaking, students will ideally call in. So student tutors have obviously their own telephone numbers, which they share with students. So students can either call in or they can email in or they can actually WhatsApp us or they can do it via Facebook. So there are a number of different ways that students can make contact with us and obviously vice versa. So you can't get away from us, unfortunately. <laughs> that's great. That's great. So um, I've got a question that's come in now, actually, and um, it says, do mature students also get to have a student tutor as well? So mature students don't unfortunately get a student tutor, but what they do um, have access to is um, on, an, on, a, um, on an individual basis is um, learning mentors. So we have learning mentors in place at college who support over 19 students. Unfortunately, we're not um, funded. Um, it's the way the funding is set up, but we, we're, we're unfortunately not able to support uh, adult learners in exactly the same way, but you are able to get support, very similar support through your, um, through your learning mentors. Um, what I would say though is um, adult students um, who are in full-time study programs um, uh, do attend their ACES sessions, so they do attend tutorial. Um, so you can obviously get access to support through your tutorial lessons as well. Perfect. Um, so with regards to the ACES sessions, who decides the subjects for these? Um, so what we do is we look at a number of different things. Uh, we look at it based on feedback from students from the previous year. We look at some of the national themes, we look at things like um, the Ofsted framework, and we look at what we want to do as a college in terms of helping prepare our young people for the wider world. And, and so, you know, it's really important that we look at some of those subjects and what you may have experienced at school, however good that may have been. Um, we, try and, we try and do it in a slightly different way by giving students that opportunity to really get underneath some of those gritty subjects and really talk about the things that are impacting on them and how they may have impact on the wider world around them. So some of them are, are you know, are tricky subjects to talk about, but it's important that we do that. Um, we're constantly reviewing um, our um, ACES sessions that we run every year. 
And based on the feedback that we had from students from last year, we made some adjustments um, to um, what we were delivering this year in order to meet the needs of those students and to factor in the feedback that we took from them. So it's a, it's a constantly moving thing um, that we review year on year based on student feedback and based on you know, the changes in the world around us. Great, and just to confirm, these ACES sessions, are they compulsory? Yes, they are compulsory. Perfect, great. Um, let's see what else we've got. So with regards to um, support, yes. um, does the college offer counselling to students and how does that work, just to confirm? Yes, the college does offer counselling to students and the way that it works is that students self-refer to counselling, so it's a confidential service um, and they offer a minimum of um, six weeks um, counselling, so you'll have sort of six sessions um, with a college counsellor and that is available to all students. Perfect, that's great, really helpful. Um, so we also have a question here that says, um, will we have parents and carers evenings and when do these take place? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, there's, there's, yeah, I mean, there's lots of wins in what we're going to be doing in the future. I think we're monitoring that at the moment. Um, we, um, we do have curriculum parent evenings traditionally where parents will come in um, and uh, talk to lecturers or tutors about um, student progress. So that, um, that does happen. Um, however, we may need to really think about how we're going to do that moving forward based on the world that we live in, um, particularly around um, you know, COVID-19. So I suppose it's, it's watch this space, but there will be plans to make sure that parents are um, contacted and included in terms of um, their, their student progress uh, moving forward. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna move on to some general questions we've got now, and then I'll also look at some that are just coming in. Um, so one of these is, when will the student receive their timetable to kind of know which days and times they're in college? Um, so uh, you, you, you get two timetables essentially when you start. The first one is for your first week of college, which is your induction timetable. And then at the end of that week, you get your full timetable. So generally, you will get a timetable within your first two weeks of starting at college. Great. Um, so I've got a student here that just wants to know how they find out what grades they need for their course. If you're okay, just to answer that one for us, Nick. Yeah, um, so generally speaking, all the courses that um, we have on offer will have entry requirements. And those are normally quite clear on the um, information about the course. So depending on the level of course that you want to apply for, there will be um, there'll be some information in there about what GCSE grades you will need or what qualifications you will need to be able to, um, uh, to, to access that course. Um, but, you know, there's, um, there's no stopping you from applying for whatever kind of level you want based on your current, um, you know, uh, predicted GCSEs. And then as and when you, know, you take your exams, and depending on the results that you get, you, you know, there's more than enough opportunities for you to either move up or down the levels, depending on the results that you achieve. Great. Thank you, Nick. No problem. So um, when do students have to apply by? How do they apply at the moment? Is it online? Is it through um, paper copy? And is there a deadline? So there's, there's no real application deadline. Um, we encourage students to try and apply as early as possible because what we want to do is obviously make sure that we can arrange your interviews um, nice and early and so that you know that you have your place uh, sorted out um, as, as, as quickly as possible really. But there's no application deadline as such. It's just important to remember that there are some courses that are more popular than others and, um, and so it's, it, you know, it's important to try and get your application in um, sooner rather than later, so we can just get your interviews done um, and then you can get your place sorted as quickly as possible. Um, in terms of how you apply, um, the best way to apply is to apply online. So you can do that through our website um, and you can basically just click on the course and you should be able to apply online straight away. Perfect, that's great. Thank you, Nick. 
Um, so having a look at some of the more questions we've got, we've got time for a few more. Um, so do students at the moment, obviously we know that COVID-19 is quite a subject that's worrying for people. Um, we know that obviously we're following the government guidelines at the moment and things could be quite different from now to when the students come to us next September. Sure. But at the moment, are students wearing masks in the college and in their lessons? What's, um, what's having to happen with that at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. So um, since the beginning of um, the academic year, we've um, all been working really hard. And I, and I, and I must say, students have been um, working really hard as well as part of our college community to keep all of us safe. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've got some very clear guidance within the college that is um, based on the government guidance that is set for us. We have one-way systems. We have um, two-meter social distancing. Um, we have uh, uh, we're asking students it's compulsory for everyone in open spaces to wear masks, and in classrooms um, where uh, two-meter space is not um, we're not able to do. Um, they are wearing masks in classrooms as well. Every single area within the college has a risk assessment for that area based on specific guidance set by government and within the college itself. And we have hand sanitizer stations um, dotted throughout the college and students, staff and visitors are using them regularly. Perfect. Um, that's really helpful and of course we know that this could, this could change. We just don't know at the Absolutely. moment but we're doing everything we can. Um, yeah, very, very much a moving picture, sorry Rachel, um, and the college is, is, is listening very intently to um, you know, government guidance and updates that are coming through regularly. So we're, we're making sure that we're updating parents and carers, applicants um, and students uh, as and when that is, uh, that's being updated. That's great, thank you Nick. Yeah. Um, so we have a question here which is, um, is Crawley College similar to our sister colleges? So obviously your Haywards Heath, your Chichester and Brinsbury. What's the differences between the colleges? That's a really interesting question. Um, I would say um, Chichester and Crawley are quite similar because we offer quite a wide range of different courses. Um, we um, right the way through from foundation learning all the way through to higher education courses and including apprenticeships. Uh, so lots of vocational courses too. Crawley is a bit smaller than Chichester, but they are very similar in terms of uh, the, the sort of the profile of courses that are offered. Uh, Haywards Heath and Worthing are very much more A levels and B techs and level three um, uh, qualifications. Um, and then Brinsbury is our land based campus. Um, so um, that's very much agriculture, horticulture, um, uh, you know, animal, um, animal care, things like that. So they're all. They're all quite different in their own unique way, um, but um, what you do get is outstanding teaching and learning and outstanding support across all of our colleges. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nick. So I think we've answered most of people's questions. Um, in the chat box, there are some links which we've put in. We do have um, recorded videos of vocational courses, a principal's welcome, um, and we've also got specific subjects sessions as well which you can um, sign up and register to so please go and follow all the links that are in the chat box that have been put in there now if we didn't answer your question you should hopefully find it out in one of the other sessions so i'll hand back over to you nick thank you very much well i just wanted to thank everybody again for attending um there obviously there's another session starting i think in about 15 or 20 minutes and that's about apprenticeships um so any of you are, are, are welcome to join on that session as well i believe the link has been sent out um either in the chat or in the q a so if anybody wants to find out a little bit more about apprenticeships uh, the team will be um, will be um, presenting, um, I think, yeah, at about um, five o'clock. So um, I just wanted to thank everybody again. Thank you very much for attending. And as always, if you've got any questions um, or you want to make contact with us to find out a little bit more, the email address and the telephone number are on your screens now. And um, any one of my colleagues would be able to um, to answer. So thank you again. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you to my colleagues for supporting me in this um, presentation.